Do you read me, Dudley? <laughs> Dudley, answer me. Someone's in that bush. What bush? <laughs> if this is love, then love is life. If this great gift is love, then simply the drift of your sweet laughter trailing away. <laughs> in the bushes? Oh, just the usual things a guy does in the bushes. <laughs> Wait a minute. I get it. You're the one telling him all those things to say to me, aren't you? Well, I... No. You're the one with the poetic soul, not Dudley. Oh, he has one, too. He's just keeping it under wraps. <laughs> <laughs> then if you're the one who says all those beautiful things, then I don't love Dudley at all. I guess I love you. What you talking about, Lisa? Hi, Arnold. Hi, Lisa. Arnold, what are you doing? That's very rude to shut the door in someone's face. That someone is Lisa, the long-distance runner. Now, listen. This might be a very good time for you to tell Lisa the truth. Now, you go run after her and catch her and tell her you're sorry. Yes, Dad. <laughs> oh, you're still here. <laughs> sorry, Lisa, the door slipped out of my hand. That's okay. Arnold, ask Lisa to come in. You don't want to come in, do you? <laughs> I'd love to. Hello, Lisa. I'm Arnold's father. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I keep thinking about you and your beautiful poetry. I want to get to know you better. Arnold, why don't you offer Lisa a nice cold drink? Dad, I don't want her to stay that long. <laughs> Will you just do what I'm telling you to? Okay. Would you like a nice, short, fast, cold drink? <laughs> well, well, well. If it isn't Arnold Jackson and his band of merry twits. <laughs> you know, nobody's supposed to be sitting in that seat until we elect the chairman. Well, if this chair's for nobody, have a seat. <laughs> still looking in vain for a story, Arnold? No. Well, don't give up. You still got a whole three minutes. For your information, Miss High Nose, <laughs> I have already turned in my story to Mr. Langford, and right now I am composing my acceptance speech. <laughs> your acceptance speech? You make me laugh. Ha! <laughs> well, then how does this grab you? In this, my hour of triumph, I would like to thank all those little people who made it possible. And there's no one littler than Lisa Hayes, <laughs> whose little brain and little talent were little match for my big story. Ha! Ha! <laughs> Arnold, you have to stop deluding yourself. It'll only make it worse when my story wins first prize and yours ends up on the bottom of a birdcage. Arnold, I'd like to have a word with you about this story you submitted for the contest. See there? The principal came here to personally congratulate me. It would be my most humble pleasure. Mm -hmm. uh, Lisa, would you mind waiting outside? Nah, I wanted to hear this if you don't mind. Well, Arnold, this story of yours gives me great pause. Is that good or bad? It's not good. Lisa, would you mind waiting outside? <laughs> Robbie, can you help me hook up the stupid volcano before my brain blows a fuse? <laughs> Arnold, it's simple. Just hook up the green wire. You boys are violating the spirit of the science fair. If you lunkheads remember correctly, everyone is supposed to do their projects on their own. Lisa, why don't you soak your face in this jar of formaldehyde? <laughs> she better not. She'll scare the dead worms. <laughs> Knock it off. I'm telling the teacher. Go ahead. See if we care. 
Mrs. James. All right, we care, we care, we care. <laughs> yes, Lisa, what is it? Arnold's getting help on his science project, and Dudley hasn't even started his yet. My project's been ready for over a week now. I've also cleaned test tubes, polished the Bunsen burners, and washed all the frog's legs. <laughs> you missed a couple. <laughs> Arnold. Lisa, thanks. I wish I had more students like you. I don't blame you. By combining these ingredients, I will create a spectacular underwater rock garden in our glorious school colors. And <laughs> <laughs> she thought my experiment stuck. <laughs> We scored! Yeah, we really got her, Arnold. <laughs> yeah, we sure did. Uh, Lisa, uh, this is not easy for me, but uh, I have to make a confession. It, it's kind of my fault that your crystal rock garden blew up. What? I uh, sabotaged it. Well, Arnold, I'm really touched that you'd admit something like that. There aren't many people brave enough to be that honest. You're not mad? Of course not. Oh! Here's your purse, Lisa. Thanks for helping out with our little demonstration. But how could you carry this around without a forklift? <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant Coletta. I figured it was some kind of demonstration all along, and I'm always happy to help out and do my duty in any and all school activities. <laughs> One more speech like that, and he's gonna arrest you for boring a police officer. Now, class, what's wrong with this picture? Cows don't carry purses. <laughs> Arnold! <laughs> Arnold, wouldn't you like to sign up, too? No, thanks, Miss Chung. Me as a Romeo? <laughs> That's a laugh. It sure is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not that funny. <laughs> Who'd believe you as Romeo? Juliet couldn't be that hard up. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, there's no way Miss Chen would pick you. Romeo and Juliet is a love story, not a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have thee gone, and yet no further than a wanton's bird. Okay, and now you kiss her. Was my lips? <laughs> That's usually the way it's done. How about if I just, just throw her a kiss? <laughs> Romeo would never throw Juliet a kiss, especially a Juliet as desirable as me. Go on, Arnold. But, Miss Chung, I'm a minor. Aren't there child kissing laws or something? <laughs> Look, I'm not too thrilled about kissing you either, Twinkie Breath. <laughs> I'm willing to suffer for my art. Arnold, there's nothing personal in this. Now, let's get on with the rehearsal. Oh, all right. Can I wear wax lips? <laughs> Quit stalling, Arnold. Plan it there. <laughs> I think you're going to say, "'Tis almost morning, I would have thee gone, and yet no farther." Then a wanton's bird. She speaketh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, a wanton's bird. Who lets it hop? Who lets it hop a little from her hand? Like? like a poor prisoner in his twisted jives, and with a silk thread plucks it back again, so loving jealous of his liberty. I would I were thy bird. Sweet, so would I. <laughs> Yet I shall kill thee with much cherishing. Good night, good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say, good night, till it be morrow. <laughs> Can I be honest with you? 
Yes, but not too honest. I really don't want to tell you this because, well, it's kind of a compliment, you know? But when I first saw you, I really didn't think you were the horse face I think you are now. That's quite a compliment, Arnold. Well, I thought you were kind of foxy. I can't believe I just said that. I can't believe you said it either. I thought the same thing about you, too, at first. Oh, you mean you couldn't stand me? No, that was after I met you. <laughs> I thought you were kind of cute, too. Kind of cute or real cute? I can't remember. You can lie. <laughs> real cute. But that doesn't mean that I like you. So, uh, thought I was kind of foxy, huh? Only from a distance. <laughs> but the closer I got, the less attractive I got. Was it because of my looks or my personality? Like I said, it's your personality. It's what's on the inside that's putting people off. They've never seen what's on the inside. They see what you show them. It's too bad they don't see what you're showing me right now. Does that make me more attractive, like when you first saw me? Well, when I first saw you, you know, you were a little different. You had your hair down and stuff. Would you like me to let it down? Sure. Well? <laughs> you know, I'm tired and I'm hungry, but I must look terrible. Ah, oh, you look fine. Arnold, this is a first. You had a perfect opportunity to insult me with one of your dumb jokes, and you didn't. I don't know. Arnold, why is this happening? I don't know. Maybe the fumes in here are getting to us. <laughs> I think it's the fumes, do you? Nah. <laughs> Are you as confused as I am right now? Arnold, things were just starting to work out and now you're blowing it. Hey, don't blame me. It's your mouth that's doing it. So you're starting with me again, huh? Well, as far as I'm concerned, the only wrong thing my mouth did was to kiss you. <laughs> Which reminds me, when we get out of here, I'm gonna have my lips amputated. You want to stuff your lips oh, in there? Who's in there? Oh, thank goodness. It's Arnold Jackson and Lisa Hayes. What are you doing in there, necking or something? No! <laughs> Lisa. What? I just wanted to say it was nice being friends or whatever for a little while. Yeah. It sure is good to be fighting again, though, isn't it? You said it. <laughs> I'll see you Monday. 